What is going on guys? I'm Pete, welcome to Retro Game Attic, and today I'm going to be working on my iMac G3 that has one glaring problem. So as you can hear, the original hard drive is super noisy, which is indicative that it is prone to failure sooner rather than later. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the steps to install a fresh SSD in this iMac G3, as well as going over the steps of a fresh Mac OS install. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so here is everything we're going to use for this project. And first off, we have a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove some of the screws on the casing, as well as a small flathead screwdriver that we're also going to use on one of the casing doors. A small receptacle just to pop the screws into, that way we can keep track of them and not lose them. A 40 pin IDE to SATA converter. This will allow us to hook up our new hard drive to the iMac G3. And of course, the replacement hard drive itself. We have a 2.5 inch SATA. This is a Lexar 256 gig, so that should be more than enough. We're also going to use a blank CDRW to burn the Mac OS fresh install on. And of course, to do that, we're going to use an older MacBook. We have a 2012 MacBook Pro here with the DVD RW drive. So we're going to use this old MacBook to burn that image to the DVD RW and then load it into the slot of our iMac G3. So with our little gear rundown out of the way, let's move on to opening up the iMac G3. Okay, so we are just about ready to open this thing up and it kind of goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, that we need to disconnect the power cable and all USB components and things like that from it. So before we begin, we're gonna want to flip this computer face down and I'm gonna use an old beach towel to protect the face of it. So let's move this out of the way and situate the beach towel. Okay, now that we have this face down, we're going to remove this VGA cover over here and I'm gonna gently pry it open with this flathead screwdriver. There's a little notch towards the top of it over here where you can fit a screwdriver right into. Place it in there and then just gently try to pry it open and there we go. We'll set that aside and we're also going to remove these two Phillips head screws down here near these vents. And then next we're going to remove these two Phillips head screws on the outer side of the video port. So there's one here and one over there. So now that those screws are out, we're able to pull the bottom half of the casing out. So the top part over here is gonna go straight down and then down here by the flip foot is gonna be pulled simultaneously out. Kind of have like a little side view going on so you can see, pop that down a little bit and then pull right out simultaneously and it should come off. And if it doesn't, just gently work at it. Okay, so we got the bottom half of the casing off. Unfortunately, we did bust a clip there. Not the end of the world because I think it was broken already. But regardless, it's off. And while this is all off, we'll clean it up. As you can see, it's super dusty and gross in there. So it can definitely use a good cleaning in there. Okay, now that we have the EMI cover here, there are six Phillips head screws to remove. There are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's pull those off right now. All right, so I was a big dummy and I accidentally removed the wrong screws. So let's put those back real quick and take out the right screws. So we'll take out these two right here. One and two. Okay, so with the correct screws finally out, we can now remove this EMI cover just by pulling it up and out. There we go. It looks decently clean underneath there, but we'll give it a good wipe down. I'm gonna use some compressed air and just clean everything out. And I'm gonna replace that CMOS battery while I'm in here. I have a replacement right here. So while it's open, it just makes sense to do it. And we'll pop out that CMOS battery. So here's the old one and here's the replacement. You can see that they're the exact same one. So let's pop that in real quick. All right, new CMOS battery is in. So this is the hard drive that we're gonna be replacing here and there are four Phillips head screws holding it in. So let's take those out real quick. We have one, two, three, and four. So now that we have those Phillips head screws out, we can take out these connectors for the old hard drive. So that connector is out and then we'll pull out this old 40 pin right here. Very gently, just pull up and we can remove the original hard drive. 
So we don't have enough clearance to pull the old hard drive out first. So what we're gonna do is remove these two RAM sticks. There's two tabs on each side. You just pull them to the side to pop them out and you can pull the RAM right out. And we'll just set those aside. So now with those out, we'll have plenty of room to pull out the old hard drive. So here is the old original 40 gig hard drive that came with this computer. And like I said before, it has been super noisy lately. So it was basically a ticking time bomb. This thing was pretty much about to fail. So this is our 256 gigabyte solid state drive that we're gonna pop into here. I'm going to cut this box open and get it out. And here is our new solid state drive versus the original. It is super small. And as you can see, it doesn't have the same connector. Hence why we have this adapter right here. So we'll plug our SATA adapter right here into the top of the new replacement drive it should just clip in just like that so obviously this new hard drive is a lot smaller than the old one and it's kind of fitting loose into the enclosure and now I know this is a little unorthodox but I'm just gonna use one little piece of double-sided tape to secure it and I'm gonna line up one of the screw holes with the existing holes to hold at least one in there okay so change of plans the screws for the old hard drive do not fit into the new one so I'm just gonna use a bigger piece of that double-sided tape and just stick it right into there so let's peel off that adhesive backing and set this hard drive in and we're gonna want it low enough where we don't inhibit the movement of those RAM slots. That looks pretty good right there. Seems to be lining up pretty well. So I'll just push it right in. So we'll just push it down just a bit. So once it's connected in there, we'll connect our 40 pin to the adapter, like so. And that should just push right in there. All right, we are connected there. We'll take the other side of this connector and just connect this piece and it should clip right in like so. And then we'll just stuff the rest of it down into there. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let's get those RAM sticks back in. Okay, RAM is back in. We are almost ready to reassemble this thing, but before we move forward, I'm just gonna clean up the bottom half of the casing. So we're gonna use just a lint-free rag, and I'm gonna use my all-purpose cleaner, Simple Green, and we're just gonna wipe down these components real quick and let them dry out. Okay, so we are looking pretty clean in there. Let's get our EMI cover reinstalled. So I know I said I'm gonna reassemble now, but I actually pulled out the old clip that I broke off. You can see that side's still good. I'm gonna super glue that in. Okay, so switching over to the bottom casing here, like I said before, I'm gonna glue this clip back onto the casing. So I'm gonna take some Gorilla Glue and just apply a little bit to the casing where it cracked that little tab off. And actually that looks really good. We'll add a little bit more to the top of the cracked area. Just a little tiny bit. It doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna let this little glued piece dry overnight just to make sure that it has good adhesion before I reattach this bottom half right here. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, so future Pete here. That clip seems to be held together pretty well. So I'm gonna continue with the reassembly of the computer. All right, so moment of truth, I'm going to put the bottom half of the casing on. I turn the computer around so you can better see what's going on here. I'm just gonna align the two clips in the front here, make sure they're in those slots. And it sounds like they both went in and that casing just slipped right in there. That was awesome. And before I tighten everything up, I'm just gonna make sure everything's aligned pretty well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So next I'm gonna reinstall those two Phillips head screws by the video out port like so. All right, then we'll pop in the vent for it, the grill pops right back in. And then I'm gonna turn the computer over so you can better see what's going on here. There's just two more screws to reinstall. Just those first two Phillips head screws that we removed. So I'll pop those back in real quick. All right, so we have that casing reinstalled. It's actually looking pretty good here. So next up, what we're gonna do is create that Mac OS 9 install CD. So let's jump over to my 2012 MacBook Pro. Okay, so we are over at the 2012 MacBook Pro. I'm going to insert the CDR into the disk drive and let's head over to Web Archive to download our Mac OS ISO. Okay, so we navigated over to the Internet Archive to download our copy of Mac OS 9.2.1 and I'll throw a link to this in the description. We're just gonna head down over to Download Options and then ISO Image. So we'll click that, it'll take a few minutes to download to your Downloads folder. It downloaded a zipped version so I unzipped it to this folder right here. So now we're ready to actually burn this to the CD. So we're gonna go into the folder, right click on that ISO file, and then burn disk image to disk. And then some more options are gonna come up here. So with the speed here, we're actually gonna go to the lowest possible. So I'm gonna go to 10X, and then all the other options look pretty good here. So let's click burn. 
Okay, so it looks like it burned properly. So let's put this disc in the iMac G3 and see if we can load this up. All right, so our install disc is inserted in the drive and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna power this on and hold C while it's booting to boot from the CD. So here we go. All right, this is a good sign. We seem to have something loading up right here. Here we go. Here's the option to boot from the CD. I think we're good. So I guess we'll click on the CD and then we'll click this right arrow. And fingers crossed, hopefully it does its thing. And it's probably hard to tell from the video, but that hard drive is super quiet now, which is nice. Here we go, Mac OS 9.2. I can't believe that actually worked. So I'll let it run through all of its prompts and I won't bore you with the details, but I'll check back in once this is all loaded up. Many, many minutes later. All right, the installation process has finished and we're gonna go to quit. So real quick too, I should probably mention when I first installed this, before you go to Mac OS install, you're gonna wanna go to utilities and then drive setup. Two options here, here's the disc that we inserted and then untitled is the volume. Before I did all this, I clicked on it and then I just clicked initialized and that set it up and mounted the drive so we were able to install Mac OS 9. But anyway, I think we're good to go here. All right, so I hit a few speed bumps along the way, but everything seems to be running pretty smoothly now, and it is so much snappier than it was before, so I'm gonna chalk this up as a win. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, or if you didn't, please be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. As always, thank you all so much for checking out Retro Game Attic. I really do appreciate you all. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the next one.